the Brad Peck was weird. It was like an explosion. It just happened. All of a sudden, there were all these young actors who nobody had heard of, and within a year, they were famous. That was unique. I don't really think there was another time like that. Brat Pack sort of came out of an Entertainment Tonight culture that needed to sort of lump actors and, and performances and kinds of people together. In uh, 1985, I was planning to write an article for New York Magazine about Emilio Estevez, who at the time was about to star in uh, St. Elmo's Fire and to make his own film. It was supposed to be an article on Emilio only. So the journalist had asked for him to get together some of the kids, you know, from Breakfast Club and St. Elmo's was coming out. So what New York Magazine did was they assigned this reporter to do an interview with all these hot young actors that were becoming the young male celebrities of that era. Called them all to dinner and it was Rob and Judd and Emilio and all these guys. So I went out to Los Angeles and we hit it off and ended up spending some time together. Uh, he introduced me to a lot of his friends who were also actors. It was staged the whole, that evening was staged and he had asked me and I just said, I don't want to go, you know, it was like they were hanging out in a bar, you know, I don't drink, so I wasn't going to go. Over the course of the week, uh, various aspects of their behavior started to strike me as bratty. They would go to movie theaters and say, I'd like to get in free, please, because I'm famous. They would go out to a restaurant and get the center table and try to attract as much attention as possible. And I just thought it was funny. I mean, here were these young, successful actors who were all doing well, but they couldn't help themselves. They just wanted to be thought of in a certain way. And, and somehow I made this odd connection in my mind to the Rat Pack from the 50s and wrote a piece about the group of them instead of writing just about Emilio Estevez. The guy drew a lot of conclusions that, you know, weren't true and just painted us with such a broad stroke. They just torched us. That guy torched us. And then it was so easy for other people to pick up on it and it's real creative, like Rat Pack, Rat Pack. It just portrayed us as like, you know, bad people, whereas we weren't. And it was like, but we had fun. And that, of course, is, I guess, not allowed. It was basically, it seemed like kind of a ploy to get them all talking about their exploits. And then the title of the article just became the Brat Pack, you know, sort of alluding to the Rat Pack. So I think it was really just a, a, a term that got coined from this cover story article. New York Magazine put it on the cover with the words, Hollywood's Brat Pack, and it went on from there. I included in it basically anybody who was roughly between the ages of say 21 and 30 and was successful and working in Hollywood. And uh, it was a convenient, fun, title. I didn't at the time have any way to, of knowing that it would, would latch on to them forever. As soon as they could, they would label us something and then you're no longer actors. Then your personalities. Then, uh, you know, it's, then it's all about your temperament. Because it seems that most of the actors I've worked with for my generation were incredibly professional. They're on time, they know their lines, they hit their marks, they treat everyone nicely. It's like, how's that a group of like, you know, hellions? Rascalians. It was unreal, is what it was. And so what I noticed after it came out was more that there was this um, really uncomfortable feeling around everybody. And by then, St. Elmo's Fire had come out, so that included everybody. It was sort of this thing about um, the guys were the ones who would go out and hang out a lot, and suddenly were being really careful with that, and they didn't want to. It was, it was feeling more than anything else, you know. It wasn't really in good faith or good spirit, I think, to kind of misconstrue and, and edit or re-edit people's words to make them all look like, you know, a bunch of pains in the asses. These guys were just exploding and, and becoming known as the Brat Pack, and I think that was a mixed blessing. Yeah, you can have a moniker attached to you. It can be something that you can uh, identify with, but it can all be, also be something that, that sort of cages you in. And it was used at the time as a derogatory phrase. By calling them the Brat Pack, you were saying they weren't genuine. But then it, then it stuck as sort of, you know, the negativity went away and it became just a description for this group of actors. I think there was definitely something very special about the Brat Pack. They had an everyday relatability to the audience members who watched their movies. Some may have been older at the time the movies were filmed than others, but um, once they were on screen, they just, were like the people you saw in high school versus the people who were kind of the teen idols before them. They seemed like more of a product of the, uh, the movie companies. But I think the Brad Pack really definitely had that relatability with everybody. 
I mean, these days, somebody's on American Idol, and, and you know, within a year or two, they're a movie star. But these were kids who were good actors, who then became famous. And, you know, the whole idea of showing your acting talent precedes your celebrity or not, it's, it's a funny thing in, in the world today.